to fulfill a commitment made in one of my last videos, I'm going to say a few words on the payment of tax, inheritance tax that is, in instalments, because this could be quite relevant, I think, for those who feel they are going to be adversely affected, or their family, their beneficiaries, the people who inherit from them, are going to be adversely affected by the changes to business relief, meaning that they won't get 100% relief on their business assets, or of course, perhaps more currently, because this has been in the news on their agricultural property. So people who are going to have their families subject to tax on assets that weren't previously subject to tax may well be interested in at least looking at the instalment option. I've already mentioned the possibility of creating that liquidity through life insurance held in trust, and that is something that should definitely be explored. But in relation to the payment of tax by instalments, it will certainly make it a little easier, although, as we've been hearing from some farmers, that yeah, you still have to find the money to meet the instalments, and that, for some, is looking like it will be difficult because of challenging trading um, position, of their challenging trading circumstances, basically. So what are those rules on instalments? Who can pay tax on instalments and on what assets? Well, you can pay your tax, your inheritance tax on things that may type, basically take time to sell. So that's that liquidity uh, issue. They take time to sell. And you can pay them in that tax in equal instalments over 10 years. So you can break the liability down, divide it by 10 uh, and pay it in instalments over 10 years. You've got to say on the inheritance tax account form IHT 400 if you want to pay in instalments. So that's for whoever's managing your estate for you. You will usually, though, have to pay interest on your instalments, the outstanding instalments, that is. The first instalment um, would be due at the end of six months after the death. For example, if you died on the 12th of January, you'd have to pay by the 31st of July, the first instalment. That's known as the due date. And then payments are due every year after that, on that date, every year for the next nine years after that date. Right, key point, what can you pay tax and instalments on? Well, you can pay tax and instalments on houses. You can pay 10% and the interest each year if you decide to keep the house to live in. So basically, dependents receive the house, beneficiaries receive the house, don't want to sell it, don't have the liquidity to pay the tax, but anticipate having it over the next 10 years, they can do that over the next 10 years. Shares and securities, this will be relevant for some of those in, in business. You can pay instalments if the shares or securities in business as a company, if the shares or securities allow the deceased to control more than 50% of the company. So if you had control of the company, then you can pay the tax on the shares in instalment. Then importantly, for those that don't have control, if the shares are unlisted shares and securities, you can pay in instalments for those shares too. That, that is basically shares not traded on a recognized stock exchange if they're worth this is key if they're worth more than twenty thousand pounds and either of these two other tests are satisfied they represent ten percent of the total value of the shares in the company at the price they were first sold at or they represent ten percent of the total value of ordinary shares held in the company so basically unlisted unlisted uh, shares um, they're worth more than twenty thousand and you've got more than ten percent of the shares basically then you should be able to pay tax in instalments that is businesses run for profit this is helpful i think to whatever the trading nature of the business is whatever the structure is of the business that you trade through if it's a business run for profit you can pay tax and installments on the net value of that business but not its assets so the value of the, the goodwill value of that business so that's another helpful provision for those that run businesses and most relevantly today for all of those those that are interested in it or are demonstrating about it, agricultural land and property. It's not really had to be looked at over the years because you haven't had to pay any inheritance tax, mostly for qualifying agricultural land and agricultural property. But now you might, if your value takes you into taxation above the one million pounds allowance where you get 100% relief and maybe even your residence nil rate band and your nil rate band that's been talked about in the press quite a bit recently too so agricultural land and property that also qualifies for the payment of tax and installments over 10 years so there you are there's a summary of the installment provisions and hopefully i have fulfilled my commitment to you in my past video